We're looking. <laughs> the Stone Cold Stunner, the Tombstone, the F5, the Attitude Adjustment. These are all iconic WWE finishing moves, and you won't find a single one of them on this list. This list is for the weirdos, either a truly bizarre wrestler with a truly bizarre move or an established wrestler that decided to try something freaky. Here are the weirdest WWE finishers in history, starting with Vito the Dress Code. Hey, here's that submission. Oh, no, again. come on. That is disgusting. It needs to be we're kicking it off with a gimmick that absolutely would not fly in today's cultural climate. Vito, a longtime Italian tough guy and member of the full-blooded Italians, clearly couldn't go on portraying a legit tough guy because, come on, who wants that? Instead, Vince McMahon must have been in need of a laugh and put poor old Big Vito in a dress. Why? Don't ask silly questions, especially silly questions with absolutely no answer. Vito's finisher became the dress code, where he would shove his opponent's head under his dress, and uh, yeah, that was the move. Oh, apparently there was some sort of arm lock that went along with this, but come on, it's not called the arm code, you know what I mean? Viscera the Visagra. <laughs> well, this is the most awkward move to explain to new wrestling fans. Why did it work? Because he's massive and crushes your pelvis, I guess? But this was another Vince McMahon needs a laugh type of moment that really went on to define Viscera's career. After giving Mark Henry a similar gimmick back in the late 90s, WWE really went for it when it was Viscera's turn and he fully embodied the world's largest love machine character. But doing this to male wrestlers was kind of, I mean, if he did it to female wrestlers it would have been even worse, but like, this wasn't good either. This was so bad. The Road Dog, the Pump Handle Slam, and the uh, Theatrics. What the? Pump Handle Slam! Anyone who was alive during the Attitude Era loved the Road Dog Jesse James. He was one of the most charismatic members of D-Generation X, and just listen to this reaction he gets when he enters the 1999 Royal Rumble. You see I'm a Or how about a few weeks later when he won the Intercontinental title? The Pump Handle Slam is a good move for a guy that's clearly not the strongest in the world, but what the D-O-double-G added to the move was uh, interesting to say the least. Thrusting back and forth prior to lifting his opponent made us cheer at the time, but in hindsight it's kind of, uh, yeah. Eugene the Horseback Ride The Eugene character could not survive in today's world. Fans may look back and wonder how this insanity made it onto TV in the mid-2000s, and honestly, it was pretty crazy even back then. Challenged mentally, the Eugene character would typically bust out Stone Cold Stunners, Rock Bottoms, and even Hulk Hogan's leg drop to finish his matches. But his signature move? He would sit on his opponent's back and ride them like a horse. Yep. That was it. What damage was it doing? Nothing physically, but psychologically, it was hard for the opponent to deal with. Frankly, it was hard for us, the fans, to deal with. The Bastion Booger Trip to the Batcave. Oh, look at that. What's that, the chubby checker drop? I think it may ugh, and I mean, ugh. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't be thrilled taking any move on this list, as Vito's dress code and Viscera's Visagra look traumatizing to say the least, but the Bastion Booger's trip to the Batcave? This was just revolting. And it was meant to be, as the commentators would play up how disgusting it must have been for his opponent. It makes sense to play up a move as dangerous or hard-hitting, but just grossing out your opponents to win? I mean, if there was ever a move that was going to do that, it's this, so I guess this was WWE's most realistic move of the era. Kizarni Talula Belly. That's so close! Oh, DDT! Kizarni didn't stand much of a chance at all in the WWE. He was undersized and way too weird looking for late 2000s WWE. Vince was still wrapping his head around the slightly undersized and heavily tattooed CM Punk after all. So Kizarni, 10 times as weird as Punk, but also 10 times less interesting, never really stood a chance. The worst part was his absolutely awful finisher, the Tallulah Belly. It had so little impact that fans genuinely believed he had made a mistake when he hit it on MVP in his debut match. From there, he was tossed out of a battle royal, and I don't think we ever saw him again. Not that we've missed him. Sorry, Kazarni. 
John Cena, the sixth move of doom. Oh my gosh! Champion Toronto! What? I was always hard on Cena's in-ring skills as I thought his punches looked goofy and his STFU submission hold looked weak. Look at it. Is he even holding on to their head? Ugh. Anyway, after filming a movie in China with Jackie Chan, Cena teased fans that he was going to debut a sixth move of Doom. This, of course, was a play on fans mocking Cena's five most popular moves. Anticipation built, and during the match at Super Showdown between the team of Cena and Bobby Lashley versus Elias and Kevin Owens, he built more anticipation as he crossed his arms and built up the intensity in his face. And then, nothing. Well, slightly more than nothing, but not much. It was a basic punch, and a pretty nerdy looking one at that. Was Cena just making fun of us, the fans? I hope so, because this was bad. Battle Cat Feline Antics. Hell, Rob, that. What, what's this? Oh, reverse! Look, I'll be straight with you. I don't know how WWE maintained any fans in the early 90s. And this is coming from someone who happily bought pay-per-views when the Road Dog was having his way with fellow WWE superstars. But Battle Cat, man? Battle Cat? Who on earth ever thought anyone was going to think this was cool? It may actually override Eugene and Viscera's entries on this list. No doubt those two were cringy, but Battle Cat? And his finisher didn't look like it hurt even a little bit. He just jumped on you and pinned your arms. Again, Battle Cat? The Bushwhackers, the Battering Ram. Ugh, okay, back to early 90s WWE then. The Bushwhackers were clearly a comedy team, and you're not supposed to take them seriously at all. I get it, I do, but their finisher, the battering ram, didn't even look like they were doing it properly. Luke would grab Butch in a headlock and run at their opponent, and yeah, that was the move. That was it. Not that the rest of their offense looked much better, but again, they were a total comedy team, but like, ugh, man, early 90s WWE was just awful. Naomi, the rear view. Oh, calls out the rear view. Here we go. I get it. Naomi is a big bum, and if Rikishi can use his as a weapon, why can't she? Actually, the best at this was actually Umaga when he would run his rear end into his opponent sitting in the turnbuckle. That actually looked brutal. When Naomi does it though, it just kind of looks uh, fine. It's not terrible, and frankly, it would be a halfway decent signature move, but as a finisher, Come on, man, the rear view. Imagine if she was lucky enough to headline WrestleMania and this was the move we used to close out the show. Gotta give her credit, though. She knows where her assets are, and she turned it into a positive. Solomon Crow, the Pendulum Splash. Hold. Look at this! Solomon Crow! Solomon Crow debuted in NXT in 2015 and initially seemed like he had some potential, but then he started ending his matches with a pendulum splash and all of that potential flew right out the window. This is easily the worst looking finisher on this list that's not meant to be a joke finisher. That's right, we're meant to take this goofy looking thing seriously. There's certain moves like Test's big boot or Bradshaw's clothesline from hell that make you go, geez, I hope the other guy is okay. The pendulum splash is just embarrassing. Embarrassing for me, embarrassing for you, embarrassing for Vince, and for Crow himself. Just awful. That concludes our list of the weirdest WWE finishers of all time. Which ones did we miss? Let us know in the comments below.